Hello, everybody. It's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church in New, New Jersey. This is my girl Sophie. Going to hang out with us. We're going to sing an old hymn called that Calvary. It says, uh, Mercy there was great and grace was free. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter, chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. God gives us a gift, eternal life, through Jesus Christ, by faith, not by works. So here's that old hymn, Ad Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me, there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. By God's word at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurn. Till my guilty soul imploring learned to Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Now I give unto Jesus everything, now I gladly own him as my king. At my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh. The love that drew salvation's plan Oh, the grace that brought it down to man Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span At Calvary Mercy there was great and grace was free Pardon there was multiplied to me There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Amen. Hello, everybody. It's Brother Dan Colon from First Bible Church, New Jersey. Uh, it's that time of month where I get to uh, share uh, share something from God's Word, the good old King James Bible, God's pure, holy, and infallible Word. And this is my girl Sophie. She's uh, she's my daughter's dog, but she likes to hang out with me, whatever I do. Wherever I am, she likes to be in the same room. And uh, so she's just going to be chilling here. So if you see this little white fluffy thing, that's my girl Sophie. I have my other dog over here, Twix. He's uh, he's over there. He's my, uh, he's my bigger dog. But, um, yeah, so it's good to be saved. It's good to be a child of the King, Jesus Christ. And I hope you're saved. I hope you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This isn't about religion. This is about what saith the Scriptures. What does the Bible say? So I'd like to uh, talk this morning uh, uh, about this portion of Scripture here, and this is a uh, this is called Resurrection uh, Resurrection Morning. This is the end of the Gospel of uh, of Luke, chapter twenty four, and this is uh, when Jesus, uh, the most important day ever when Jesus rose from the dead you see a lot of people want to believe that a lot of people believe Jesus you say yeah oh yeah I believe in Jesus that's the guy that hangs on the cross to see statues of Jesus and they know that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world which he did he died for for the sins of the world but he rose from the dead you see that's 
if he would have died and stayed in the grave, it would have been, it wouldn't have been worth anything. But because he did what he said he did, he not only was crucified, he died on the third day. He rose from the dead. He paid the price for our sins. He took our sins all upon him and he brought him to hell. He paid the price and he rose from the dead. So I'm going to read out of the book of Luke, chapter 24. Before I do, i just like to say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we know your word is truth. That uh, we could read it confidently knowing that this is your word. And Father, Lord, just help us to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. So Luke, chapter 24. It says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices, which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in, and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. God does not amaze me. God is God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, and in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It doesn't amaze me that God can create, that could keep everything going, that he could paint the stripes on a tiger, that he could put fish, that he could create fish and whales and animals, and he could create the human body, which is so complex, a lot of things... Doctors still don't understand how the human body works. Your DNA. That doesn't amaze me. God says that he could do it. That never amazes me. I'm never amazed what God can do. He creates the heaven and the earth. Of course he could. It doesn't amaze me that he... And it doesn't amaze me that he could lay down his life and take it up again. It doesn't amaze me that Jesus could rise from the dead. Of course he could. He's God. Amen? So whatever God does, I admire it. I adore it, and I praise and worship him for it. But I never really say, wow, how can God do that? I never say that, because he's God. Amen? But what amazes me is when I read the scriptures and I read the gospels, that Jesus Christ said, in three and a half years, must have said it a hundred times, told his disciples that I'm going to be betrayed by man, I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to die, and on the third day I'm going, to rose, I'm going to rise again. But yet, we see over here, in Luke 24, it says, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulchre. They brought spices, the women brought spices to, to anoint a dead corpse. They went to the sepulchre to anoint the dead corpse so it didn't stink after three days. In verse 3 it says, And they entered in, and they found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said unto them, this is the angels there, they said unto them, Why, why seek ye the living among the dead? Verse 6, one of the most profound statements in the Bible, the most important thing is it says, He is not here, but is risen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Up from the grave he arose. There's, a, there's an old hymn we sing, Up from the grave he arose. What a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Verse 6, it says, He is not here, but is risen. And it says, Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? The angel said, Remember what he spake unto you? Why, why are you much perplexed? Verse 7, it's, it says, saying, Remember when Jesus said, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. It says, Don't you remember? For three and a half years, Jesus said this over and over. Let's look at one of them. Let's look at what's still in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9. 
chapter 9. Luke 9, 22. <clears throat> He's talking to Peter. He says, Peter, wh whom, whom, whom say ye that I am? Peter answered, Peter answering said, the Christ, the Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Saying, Jesus telling Peter, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. He says, Peter, I'm going to be slain. I'm going to rise up the third day. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16, uh, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. He must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and raised again the third day. Now this, he was talking to Peter, and Peter took him. He actually, he laid hands on our Savior. He, laid, he took him and he said, and he began to rebuke him. Peter rebuked Jesus Christ, and he says, be it far from thee, Lord, it shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Jesus said to Peter, he says, Get thee behind me, Satan, that would an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. You think Peter would have remembered this incident? And maybe on the third day after Jesus Christ died and suffered many things, you think Peter would have ran down to the tomb to see if Jesus was there? Well, he should have known that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Amen? So verse 7, it says, Jesus said, The Son of Man must be deliver, delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And verse 8, And they remembered his words. All of a sudden, they remembered his words. I kind of wish it says, And they believed his words. But it says, And they remembered his words. And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna the, uh, and Mary the mother of James and the other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And verse 11 amazes me. And their words seemed to be to them as idle tales and they believed them not. Oh my goodness, they didn't believe, they didn't believe them. They didn't believe that Jesus, that Jesus Christ, that his body wasn't there. They believed them not. For three and a half years, Jesus said over and over again, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be betrayed by man and crucified. I'm going to rise up again on the third day. And on the third day, the men are sitting at home and the women are going down to anoint his corpse so it doesn't stink so bad as it decomposes. So for three and a half years of watching Jesus heal the sick, open the eyes of the blind, raise people from the dead, walk on water, calm the storms, that the Bible says even the winds and the seas obey him, the same Jesus said over and over, I'm going to die, be crucified, buried, third, three days later I'm going to rise from the dead, and they didn't believe him. That amazes, that amazes me. That amazes me. Verse 12, and, and arose Peter and ran to the sepulchre, stooping down, he ran into the sepulchre and beheld linen clothes laid by themselves, and he departed, wondering in himself that which was to come, that which was come to pass. Peter's saying, what happened? Verse 13, and behold, two of them went the same day. This isn't Peter. This is two other disciples. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. I looked it up as about seven miles, seven miles out of Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened, which had happened. And it came to pass as they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So Jesus, who was with them, started walking with them down to the road to Emmaus. Verse 17, And he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another? As ye walk 
and are sad. Jesus said, why, why are you sad? I conquered death. I made a way so that when you die, you don't have to go to Abraham's bosom. You could go right to heaven, right, right, right to heaven. You don't have to stop anywhere. I made the way. I paid for the sins of the world. I was with the prophet Isaiah, what the whole Old Testament talked about, that I would bear the iniquities and the sins of man. He says, why are you sad? Verse 18, And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which have come to pass there in these days? And Jesus, and he, and he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, he says, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed, and word, and which was mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. You see, they had a plan for Jesus. It says, we trusted. See, past tense. They're not trusting anymore. It says, we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. They stopped trusting. They had a plan for Jesus. You see, they wanted him to redeem Israel. They, want, they wanted him to uh, kick out the Roman soldiers. They wanted him to be the king and rule over Israel. No more, no more being under oppression. They wanted him to redeem Israel. Put it back to the old ways it used to be. See, they had a plan for Jesus. But Jesus, instead of Jesus had a Jesus, Jesus had a uh, they had a plan for Jesus. They wanted Jesus to do something, but Jesus, instead of doing what they wanted him to do, he did what he said he was going to do, and he did w what was best for them. You see, a lot of I, it amazes me that they didn't believe that Jesus was going to rise from the dead, that they're, they're, they're perplexed that all these things happened. But they had a plan for Jesus, and Jesus did what he said he was going to do. This says, you know what all this says? It tells me that you could, you could read your Bible, you could be under good preaching all your life, and not really believe. The thing that we have is the Holy Spirit, which opens our eyes and helps us to understand the Scriptures. You see, they how could they be how could they be said on such a great day? Verse twenty one, because uh, verse twenty one, past tense, they were trusting anymore. They were sad because they had a plan for Jesus and he didn't carry it out according to what they had planned, what they wanted him to do. They expected the Lord to do something they wanted him to do. Instead he did what he said he was gonna do. They were unhappy because he did because he didn't do what they wanted. Instead he did what they needed. You see, we get sad. I get down in the dumps sometimes and I start, you know, giving myself a pity party. What was me? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? You know, so, temper so you know what happens is that I forget. I forget what the Lord says. And I have a plan in my own heart that I, the way I think things should go. But God has a better plan. You see, we want, it, we, we want Jesus to do what we want. But Jesus does what's best for us. We want Jesus to give us health, give us our health back, give us finances, give us money. He want, see, we, we want Jesus to give us things. You see, when you become a child of God and you get saved, and you're a Christian, sometimes when you get saved, your problems don't end. Sometimes they just begin because you're trying to serve God. You see... When you get saved, you become born again, you become a child of God, you become a Christian. Sometimes your troubles just begin because 
The devil is not too happy and the devil will attack you. But you'll be, for eternity, you'll be safe. What are you going to live here? 80, 90 years? 100 years maybe? What's that compared to 100,000 years? Where are you going to spend eternity? You see, when God says he's going to do something, he does it. He doesn't lie. In Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1. Timothy, Titus 1, 2. It says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. You see, God doesn't lie. And Jesus knows what's best for us. So when the Lord tells us something, we should take heed. John chapter 3, the Gospel of John chapter 3. This is Jesus saying, he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God doesn't lie. He says, John 3, 16, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their, e because their deeds were evil. You see, when we're born, when my children were born, when I was born, I don't have to be taught to do bad things, because bad things come natural to a child. Lying comes naturally. Stealing comes naturally. Give me that. That's mine. That's natural. That's my, all my children. They were used to snatch toys from the other children. And I would have to teach them to do good because we're born in sin. It says, because our deeds were evil. It says, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You see what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm trying to show you how when God says he's going to do something, he does it. He doesn't lie. When Jesus said, I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to be betrayed by man, I'm going to be crucified, and on the third day I'm going to rise again, he does it. Whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. He's going to do it. So when he says you must be born again, you have to be born again. When he says you can have eternal life, you can have eternal life by trusting in him. When Jesus said, he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He's not lying. He's not lying. Let's just take a few from, from John. Uh... John 5, John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, remember, he's not lying, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Jesus isn't lying. He said, you believe on Jesus, he said, believe on me, you'll have everlasting life. Do you have everlasting life? You're going to spend an eternity somewhere. So am I. I have everlasting life. I have eternal life. I could say that with total confidence. I don't say it out of arrogance that I'm going to heaven when I die because I don't deserve to go to heaven when I die. Because I've lied, I've stealed, I've stole, I've committed adultery, I've done all these sins. I, if you, go, if you, if you uh, judge me by the Ten Commandments, and I'm sure if you, if you judge yourself by the Ten Commandments, you've offended God. You've broken God's law. We deserve hell. But I say with total confidence I'm going to heaven because Jesus said, He that hath the Son hath life. And I have the Son of God. I have Him because I've trusted Him as my Lord and Savior. So I have eternal, eternal life. I say that with confidence. Confidence not of myself. Confidence in God's Word, the Bible. Confidence that these things are true. They didn't believe Him. That He was going to be 
that he was gonna, that he was, they were amazed that the tomb was empty, that the, that there was an empty tomb. The angel says he is not here; he is risen. Praise God, he's risen, because he said he was gonna raise from the dead, and he rose from the dead. John chapter six. John chapter six. Uh, Verse 35, Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you uh, that ye also have seen me and believe not, and all that the Father giveth me shall come, unto, shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. You'll never be cast out. You can have eternal life. John chapter 10. My favorite chapter of the Bible. John chapter 10. Uh, verse 9. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Same chapter. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them. And they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. These are promises. Jesus said he'll give, He gives me eternal life, and I'll never perish. Amen. The devil can't take me away. Nobody can take me out of, out of his hand. I am his. He is mine. 11, 25, John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said, Jesus say, said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? It goes on and on. How about this promise in Hebrews? If you're sad, this should make you un unsad, if that's such a word. Hebrews chapter 11. 13, actually 13. How about this promise? I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. What a Savior we have. When He says He's going to do something, He does it. When He promises something, He keeps His promise. You can have eternal life just by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered all these things for you and for me. He didn't deserve to, to die. The Bible says that God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Religion cannot save you. Your priest, rabbi, imam, whatever, cannot save you. Your good works cannot save you. The Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. The Bible says, if you've offended the law in one point, you're guilty of all. If you've broken one commandment, you've broken, you've broken them all. You've broken God's law. There has to be a penalty. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It's only through the Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for eternal life. And thank you, Lord, Father, for your word. Thank you that you don't lie. Thank you that you, when you say something, you keep your promise. 
And I pray in Lord Father that you would just uh, do a work in someone's life today, Lord. Open the eyes of their understanding. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may behold, behold wondrous things out of thy law. In Jesus' name, amen. So, until next time. So, say goodbye, Shelfie. Come on. I give her a little treat because she hung out with us. Talk to you soon. God bless.